Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today we have Mr. W. V. Raman returning, and today he's going to talk about his book, The Winning Sixer, and what prompted him to write this book. As you all know, he was a former Test cricketer, and he was also a cricket coach. He coached the uh, women cricket team of India for a few years, and now his new avatar. He, in his new avatar, he's a TV commentator. You might have heard him on IPL. He was also uh, in action in the Women's World Cup 2022 that recently concluded in New Zealand. So let's welcome our guest of the evening, W. V. Raman. Namaskar, Raman. Welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskar, I'm Shri. And uh, how have you been? I'm doing well, sir. And thank you so much for agreeing to sit down to talk to us about your new book, The Winning Sixer. Um, last time we spoke at length, I think it was a two, three-part series. We we went over various things about coaching, the art of coaching, how you approach. It was a fascinating, uh, you know, I would say, look at uh, prospective parents who want to take their children to, you know, uh, take up cricket. They should just look at this three-part series. You can understand a lot of nuances. Um, uh, Raman, what prompted you to write this book, and how has the reaction been thus far? See, I have, I did not plan to write a book at all. This came about in a very uh, strange, almost bizarre manner. What happened was um, I had gone to Bombay to watch a match. And there I met somebody who happened to be a literary agent. And he's quite a keen follower of cricket as well. Mm, so... He got into a conversation with me and then he was trying to sort of um, pitch the idea of me writing a book because of my involvement in cricket for such a long time. And I said, look, there are enough and more books written about cricket. So I don't think uh, another angle, but, you know, it's like a Indian movie, different routes, but the end is already known what it is all about. So... <laughs> I said I was not going to be really you know, keen in writing a book. And then his enthusiasm was a lot more than mine was at that stage about my writing a book. So, obviously, you know, you don't really sort of um, dampen the enthusiasm of a young man. And uh, he said uh, the parting shot from him was, sir, but uh, whatever it is, don't forget about this conversation. Think about it. So I said, okay, fair enough. Let me think about it. And if at all I have a change of um, heart, I'll let you know was how uh, that conversation ended. And then um, I forgot about it completely. And 15 days later, there were a spate of articles. For some reason, they were writing about uh, captains and the various captains. Uh, for whatever reason, that was perhaps, you know, what happens in India sometimes if somebody picks on some theme then everybody gets onto the bandwagon. So something similar like that happened. And uh, as I was reading one of those days, it suddenly struck me that, yes, this young man wanted me to write a book, but um, let me not write about cricket, but try and use cricket and sport and combine it with uh, <clears throat> the management principles that happens in sports arena. And also it is a part of... Um, the lives of sporting icons. So let me combine that and also draw upon my experience of uh, being the corporate world for about 15, 18 years. So I said, why not integrate those two and see how it pans out? So the germ of an idea was triggered actually by a spate of uh, articles that, no, that uh, anyone and everyone would have just read through it and forgotten about it. But uh, suddenly something germinated in my head and I called up this guy and I said, look, it may not be about cricket at all. It may be something to do with cricket. Yes, the basis will be cricket, but the theme will be different. I'll be improvising upon it. And that young man was absolutely thrilled. He said, sir, please go ahead. I'll, you take whatever time you want. And we'll definitely uh, get this sorted out. And that was the start of this. Wonderful. And viewers, at this point of time, we are taking questions for W.V. Raman. Um, as long as you keep the questions in and around his book, uh, The Winning Sixer, 
or if uh, about his uh, uh, experience as a cricketer and we'll be happy to uh, have him answer those questions um uh, raman one question that i have personally is you know we in life not just in sport you know you learn more from your failures than from your successes how does your book look at this you know up and down pendulum that is failure and success for cricketers and sometimes they fail even though it might not be their fault they might get one unplayable delivery and if you get two or three suddenly you find yourself out of the team have you addressed things like that yeah what i have done is towards the end of the book i think probably um, it might be in the one of the chapters last three chapters to be precise where i have spoken about different stages and uh, the composition of that book is um, in the form of a dialogue that i'm having with somebody and there i also you know, gone about talking about the key points uh, with um, an acronym where uh, <clears throat> all of that starts with one particular letter so that's how i have composed that book and uh, i have spoken about the various stages of life where you start and then you stutter then you skyrocket and then you know uh, things like that so five ss so it's it, this book is about 3 years old uh, and uh, a lot of people were uh, taken up by the way it was presented and uh, by the way it was uh, suggestive not sort of imposing myself upon uh, the others it's also not a uh, a book wherein it's um, more of a downloading kind of thing like you tend to read when you read uh, genres of this kind so it's more of a easy flowing conversation which obviously uh, gave me a lot of leeway to bring in uh, quite a bit of humor and also uh, try and uh, deviate and then come back to it as in when required so that was basically the reason why i composed it in that particular form yes i've addressed the, the address the uh, various stages you go through you sort of start off and then you try to establish and then if you're complacent you slip back and then you got to also have the uh, open mindedness to accept that you are slipping and also that uh, you got to address uh, your complacency and try and again you know overcome your setbacks so all these things have been you know um, mentioned in fact a lot of it has been written about uh, these various uh, stages of uh, life one goes through and and uh, raman recently your book was uh, adjudged as one of the top 100 for self style uh, improvement books can you talk a little bit about this how this came about because that's what kindled my interest and then i reached out to you and say let us talk about your book and uh, 3 years late but i thought at least having achieved some recognition i thought i should talk to you since i've known you for a few months now it's very kind of you to immediately you know uh, do uh, something and organize this uh, as far as i am concerned uh, i had no idea something of this sort uh, existed uh, because uh, i am not the kind of professional writer who is aware of a lot of things that is um, Uh, related to the literary world um, the thing goes i wrote the book as yes, it was received well and uh, obviously people are still buying copies of it that's heartening and uh, suddenly i was uh, logged into twitter a couple of days ago and then i see this particular tweet wherein it's mentioned that uh, this book is uh, a part of uh, uh, the <coughs> self help thing and it is also chosen in the top 100 so uh, i saw it in the morning i was uh, trying to pinch myself and make sure as i was fully awake and i was seeing things as they were and i was not dreaming so uh, that came as a bit of a pleasant jolt and after which uh, obviously i couldn't hold my delight and i made it a point to let everybody know everybody in the sense the people that i know and who would be happy about um, getting informed about this particular thing so it is not something uh, of a process that i was involved in it was something that uh, that particular organization obviously felt uh, 
was worth recognizing that is really overwhelming and also it is gobsmacking in a way because um, i didn't genuinely think uh, something like this will come up but as they say yeah, god's mills spin in their own way and <laughs> so obviously by the grace of god you know this uh, particular thing has come about wonderful um the winning sixer the name of the title what was the significance of the title uh, you can win even from a no ball which will give that one run more to cross the other team score i'm just curious yeah your curiosity is justified because uh, uh, left to me i don't think i would have called it the winning sixer um i would have perhaps called it uh, make your play in business to give a bit of a heads up or a, provide that connect between business and sport but the winning sixer was something uh, that was um, chosen by the publisher because obviously they are better informed and they do their research right, right, um, right. which course. i don't do yeah. so that is how uh, that was uh, settled upon the title of the book and uh, the significance of that was again you know the thing of winning and also six is something that um you need skill to score is something that the publisher thought and it was something that they found out when they spoke to people or whatever it was the process that they went through uh nonetheless uh, yes uh, it it can be a, attractive enough for people who are aware of what uh, cricket is all about and also the very word sixer was also an indicative part of uh, the title because um, the publisher felt that uh, that will be a lot more attractive than what i had suggested apart from make your plain business or the other two options that i had given there wonderful sir i wish you all the best and uh, are you planning on writing any sequels to that no no i don't think i have that much of brains uh, shri i've done <laughs> one so <laughs> as of now i don't have anything planned and uh, uh, maybe you know when the time is right or when i think that i can uh, muster up the courage and the material to uh, make up another book i might probably do it but still this is not something i planned and executed so maybe some other trigger will happen that's how life is you don't uh, do everything uh, by planning and completing your plans it's just that certain things happen for reasons that you don't think existed also wonderful sir and and viewers i can't emphasize this enough if you have a child who is 7 6 7 8 9 years old lo looking like he is going to be very talented and you want to enroll them into this cricket coaching camps any city doesn't matter you may want to watch the three part conversation i had with uh, wb raman because he makes he makes some pointers that are absolutely spot on and and some people don't understand why he is saying what he is saying to understand that you need to really watch it um uh, raman i think i'm done with my questions and we have a few questions from our viewers let's put up the questions please ameya wants to know why has india not been able to produce tall strong fast bowlers who bowl consistently about 90 miles i know there are very good medium pacers but no genuine pacer who lasts long see it's not about pace at that level you must have the skills to make the ball seem or swing it's only then that becomes a potent combination because if you're just quick even if you bowl at 120 miles an hour what happens is the batters are good enough to pick the line and smash it through the line so the important thing here is a combination of uh, pace and craft and also skill sets raw pace on its own is of no use in as much as just uh, blind courage is not good enough for humans to succeed all right i think uh, there is one more question murali krishna madduluri madikeri i'm sorry raman sir such a pleasure to meet you after so many years how are you i enjoyed your stylish batting during my teenage you are admired a lot you've been very kind in fact you know um, i must really uh, tell you that uh, but for fans like you and uh, sport lovers and especially cricket lovers like you 
where will we be and what will we be thank you very much uh, next question from gradient descent is copybook stylish classic test cricket dead oh do you like me or you don't like me <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good question but uh, to be honest i think uh, what uh, you are asking is uh, really a very good question it also indicates that you do know your cricket i think as far as this touch and uh, uh, the copy book stylish cricket i think uh, is gradually you know going uh, extinct for the simple reason there's a lot more of power uh, that is coming to cricket or at least the belief that cricket is a power game is coming to cricket uh, maybe uh, this cycle also will perhaps uh, become extinct at some point in time and again people will go back to the classic uh, textbook cricket uh, like we have seen the white bottoms coming back to vogue at time at at certain point in time after it did in the 70s so everything is a bit of a cycle but i think for the time being we have to reconcile with the fact that uh, we may not see enough of that stylish touch players like a mark wa or a vvs lakshman or azuruddin or uh, uh, yeah david gar so we may not probably get to see too many of that variety we'll tend to see a lot of uh, guys who can hit a long ball next question please uh, rangarajan raman dear sir will india use the english conditions to its advantage and win the test series final yes we have a real challenge on our hands because uh, obviously uh, it's a different management there are a lot of changes in the sides in both the teams in fact and even in terms of team management um, there have been changes in both the teams uh, the long and short of it is that it is going to be a stiff challenge for india uh because one is that uh, england is playing at home two is that they will be really burnt after their victory against new zealand and uh, what is also transpired in a short span of time is that um, they're going to be playing a different uh, brand of cricket altogether and uh, what would perhaps serve india well is to try and uh, treat fire with fire if they're going to be playing a very uh, positive aggressive brand of cricket we got to try and match up uh, with them that's when we can overcome them otherwise if you're going to play the wait and watch kind of cricket we may come second best thank you very much uh, raman and that brings us to a close of today's hangout viewers you can get raman's book in amazon can you put up the graphic please and uh, it's available in uh, amazon uh, just look for the winning sixer by w v raman and i encourage all of you to buy it and read it it's important that we develop this reading habit when we were youngsters raman and i we had no other option there was no tv no twitter no 140 characters we had to to understand the world around us we had to read books then you sat down and you know try to imagine what the author was trying to convey and and i think that is coming back thanks to covid but people are still used to just you know hitting it with the 140 characters but more importantly i think this is important when you do self help you can't get everything in one shot you have to look at the book in many ways at many times to understand how to you know internalize the situation for yourself thank you to once again that, to describe Sorry. that book in a line what i've tried to convey is that um, there is a leader in each one of us is just that we tap that potential and make the best of it because i i get the impression from whatever i've seen in the last 10 to 15 years generally in life and more so in cricket is that youngsters are being downloaded they are always looking for somebody to guide them and uh, equally uh, guilty are the elders uh, who are not empowering the youngsters to evolve on their own and uh, that is basically the reason why i took this route of uh, uh, bringing that out uh, and also to emphasize on the fact that uh, we need to try and become leaders it's not necessary for us to enjoy the position of a ceo or become the president or prime minister of any country to display or you know um, bring out our leadership qualities 
everyone in uh, every sphere and at every strata of life uh, need to exhibit uh, leadership and management qualities is what i've tried to convey thank you very much sir and all the best to you and we look forward to listening to you on ipl maybe other places also and as always a pleasure talking to you namaskar thank you sir thank you very much take care and thanks for uh, all of you for turning up and having me out here